Here's how you process a payment with the Clover Virtual Terminal. We'll cover storing credit cards on file, customizing the virtual terminal screen itself, and viewing processed transactions. Once you log into your Clover account, you'll find the virtual terminal button on the upper left hand corner of the main menu. The most common use of the virtual terminal is when you're taking a credit card payment over the phone, so that's the scenario that we'll demonstrate today. Under the transaction type drop down menu, you'll notice that there are currently five different options that you can select from take payment, pre authorization, invoice, card verification, and finally recurring payments. You do have the ability to remove some of these options, such as the authorizations and the card verification, if you don't want those options to show. In order to do that, come down and click on the account and setup tab and find the virtual terminal link under the transactions section. Here you can check or uncheck the box to include those transaction types in the drop down field. You can also choose to include a tip line, sales tax, and other custom information, including setting it to be a required field in some cases. Once you've configured the options, be sure to save and return to the virtual terminal screen where you'll notice your changes. On the virtual terminal screen, first fill out the dollar amount of the sale. Next, add a note for the product or service that you're charging for. And again, since we're demonstrating a sample phone order, you'll check this box here to confirm a mail order or phone order sale. The total will show here and next is the customer information. Click the add new customer button and add the pertinent details for your customer in question. If you have a customer profile that's already stored in your Clover account, you can search the name and you'll be able to click the customer from the auto suggest options. Fill out the credit card details and the asterisk denotes a required field. You can check the box to store the card with the customer in question for future purchases. There is a card descriptor section that allows you to update business information and customize what appears on the customer's credit card statement. This will auto default to the company name that's associated with your merchant account and the name that's on file, of course, so you shouldn't have a regular need to change this field. Receipt delivery is either none or email, and you can fill the email in the box that appears if you choose that option. Finally, just complete the payment and you'll be shown a successful payment notification and you can click done to continue. This payment then is sent to your daily batch total and can be found in the reporting tab and on the dashboard under today's net sales. You can view the transaction details in a number of ways, one of which by clicking into the transactions, then payments tab and viewing the details of the transaction in question. This page allows you to view the receipt and if you elected to send a receipt to your customer, they'll get an email that looks like this with confirmation of their payment. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, there's different types of transactions that you can run by clicking the virtual terminal button in the Clover dashboard and getting to the virtual terminal screen. So be sure to check out the description for tutorials both on invoicing and and recurring payments functionality. If you're researching Clover for your business and you have questions that aren't addressed in the overview video or this video, please make sure to leave a comment below and look for the Clover tutorials playlist in the description below for more category and functionality specific tutorials. For more information on Clover Point of Sale, Clover Online, just like this one, be sure to click the subscribe button so you receive notifications when future videos are posted. Share this video with your friends and hit the thumbs up button if you found this video helpful and useful. And if you have any questions, once again, leave a comment below. I'm Brian Manning, and we'll see you on the next one.